Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Baltimore Oriole Baseball. This is Chuck Thompson along with Bill O'Donnell from Memorial Stadium in Baltimore, where now the Orioles and the California Angels are just minutes away from game two of our finite doubleheader. This game will match uh, veteran right-handers for the visiting California Angels. It'll be Jim Maloney, who made his Major League debut against the Orioles, and uh, the newest face in the Orioles starting uh, mound tour, Pat Dobson. In the background, you can hear public address announcer Bill Bowling with the starting lineup. For those of you who will score the game with us, here are the batting orders for game two. Leading off and playing second base for California will be Sandy Alomar. Batting number two will be the California first baseman, Jim Spencer. Batting number three in left field, the angel left fielder is Alex Johnson. Batting number four, the right fielder, Tony Canigliaro. Batting five in center field here in the second game tonight will be Roger Repose. The number six hitter and third baseman is Ken McMullen. Batting seven and catching and coming off an outstanding game against the Oriole right-handed Jim Palmer Tuesday night will be John Stevenson. The number eight hitter, shortstop, replacing uh, Jim Fragosi, who was out with a bad foot, it'll be Sid O'Brien. And the starting pitcher is Jim Maloney. Now, manager Earl Weaver's lineup for game number two reads as follows. Leading off will be shortstop Mark Belanger. Batting number two, the center fielder Paul Blair. The number three hitter and first baseman is Boog Powell. Batting four in right field in game two will be Frank Robinson. Batting five in left field will be Merv Rettenmond. The number six hitter, Oriole third baseman, Brooke Robinson. Batting seven and catching the second game, Elrod Hendricks. Batting eight and playing at second base in game two will be Jerry Devanen. And the pitcher will be Pat Dobson. Dobson on the year with the Orioles has won a ball game, has lost two. This for Pat will be his sixth start of the year. And uh, his first against the Angels. In other words, that inning that he pitched last night in the rained out effort does not show up on the records at all. So in truth, tonight is his first start against California. He has no career record against the Angels. His win this year was against the Yankees April the 16th, and it was a fine four-hitter. His losses have been in fine pitching efforts to Detroit and to Oakland. His most recent start was against Kansas City last Friday night. He was not involved in the decision as the Royals won it. Five to four. Before continuing, we'll take a very brief pause for station identification. This is the Baltimore Oriole Baseball Network. Yep. About the right-handed Jim Maloney, who will start game two for the California Angels. Maloney is 0-1 uh, this year with the Angels. He has a lifetime record uh, in the major leagues, all of it except this year in the National League, of 134 wins and 82 defeats. 0-1 against the Orioles, lifetime, is making his second American League start. His first start was against the Orioles in Anaheim, April the 25th. In that start, Maloney pitched a total of five and a third innings, allowed five earned runs, nine Oriole bases. He walked three and struck out one. This is Maloney's third American League game. He relieved uh, for Tom Murphy against Oakland April the 20th in Anaheim, and at that time he went two innings. We'll be back with the start of tonight's game right after this message. Time was, and not too long ago either, when a man who'd worked hard all his life felt pretty lucky to get a watch and a nice pat on the back when he was retired. Oh, but how times have changed. Today, if your employer wants to keep good people, he knows he's got to offer a lot more than that. He's also got to offer group life and health insurance, as well as a good retirement program. A much more convincing way to show his appreciation, don't you think? And that's where your man from Sun Life of Canada steps in, with a complete range of plans specifically designed to keep good people, like you, for instance, very happy. Protecting your livelihood as well as your life is another service of your man from Sun Life of Canada. The insurance people with ideas. Available in the 45 states where the company conducts business. Well, 
let's take a look at the scoreboard and the inclement weather that has uh, certainly held down the crowd in Baltimore and bothered us here in our town. Cost us a ball game last night. It's also bothersome along the eastern seaboard, particularly in New York City and Philadelphia. It has caused postponements. The Cardinals and the Phillies rained out in Philadelphia, and the Cubs and the Mets were rained out this afternoon at Shea Stadium. In Chicago, the Boston Red Sox uh, wad up the White Sox by a score of 10 to 1. Peters got the win. He's 3 and 2, and Johnson the loss, 3 and 3. The Yankees are in Minnesota tonight, and the probables are Stottlemyre against Tommy Hall. Houston will be in Montreal tonight with Dierker against Renko, and later on this evening, Cincinnati uh, against the L.A. Dodgers. Now, this second game of the doubleheader will conclude the Angel visit to Baltimore, and tomorrow night, the baseball excitement gets even more exciting at our stadium as the Oakland A's will move in for a three-game series. Tomorrow night at 8 o'clock, Saturday night at uh, 7 o'clock, and Tuesday or Sunday afternoon at 2 o'clock. Now, the pitching lineup for the forthcoming Oakland series will have Mike Cuellar against Jim Hunter tomorrow night, Jim Palmer against Chuck Dobson Saturday night, Grant Jackson against Vita Blue Sunday afternoon, Mother's Day, that day, and Vita Blue. Well, we're ready to go. Game number two is underway, and here is our partner, Bill O'Donnell. Thank you, Chuck, and good evening again, everybody. Dobson makes his first pitch a good one, and he gets the outside corner. So we're underway with strike one to Sandy Alomar. Alomar, Spencer, and Alex Johnson. As we're starting this uh, second game almost straight up at 8 o'clock after the Birds won the opener behind McNally as he gained his fifth win and 3-1. to one. The one-strike delivery is strike two at Alomar's knee. Well, Dobson went an inning against uh, the Angels here last night in a game that was uh, called when we had rain in the second inning. So actually what you can do as a result of last night's appearance by Dobson is just wipe everything off the books, of course, that took place in that uh, postponement last night. Two-strike delivery is strike three right to Alomar's knees again. All three Dobson pitches were almost in the same spot. Well, Dobson starts strong against Alomar. Last night against Alomar in that first inning, he had him fly to left field, and now he faces a man to deliver a home run against him. Of course, that uh, postponement had uh, Spencer lose the home run. He's got five homers and nine RBIs, and he is one for seven in the series. He had a first game home run. One gone, nobody aboard in game two. Outside, a little bit low, ball one. Here's Dobson now going to the pump, and he rips in the 1-0 delivery. He snaps the curve on the inside corner. One ball and one strike. Dobson's defense in the nightcap has moved deep at first base. Second baseman the van in the bits of the outfield grass. Shortstop Belanger over near the bag. And Brooks wide a third against Jim Spencer. The outfield, Rettenman left, Blair center, and Frank Robinson is in right field. Alex Johnson will be the next batter after we find out what happens between Pat Dobson and this batter, Jim Spencer. The 1-1 delivery is a high outside curve. Two balls and one strike. Spencer batting at 198 before the doubleheader began. In the opener to the doubleheader, Spencer went 0 for 3. Dobson to work with a 2-1. Here's a high towering foul out of play. 2-2 to Jim Spencer. In case you did not hear the afternoon final at Chicago, and you're just flicking on your radio dial tonight, the Red Sox beat Chicago by a score of 10 to 1. By virtue of that win, plus the Orioles' first game win, the Red Sox still maintain a one-game advantage in the American League's Eastern Division race. If the Orioles can win this nightcap, they would pull you within a half game of the first place Red Sox. Dobson giving his catcher Elrod Hendricks a long look before delivering two and two. Now he's ready. Rocks back and strides forward. The swing and a miss, he gets him on a high fastball. Two strikeouts picked up quickly by Spencer. One looking to Alomar, one swinging against Spencer. And here's Alex Johnson. Johnson in the first game was up and he was out four times. Alex the Act shows the average of a 170, a 278. The Angels coming into this uh, second game have won 14. They have dropped 13. 
When they were on the road to start the season against Western Division clubs, the Angels did extremely well. In Western Division Park, they won seven of nine. First pitch to Alex Johnson made by Dobson. A curve, bounce short to hold it short. Belanger digs it out. His hurried throw is in time. He gets Alex Johnson. And it's three up and three down against Dobson in the top of the first inning. At the end of a half inning of play, the Angels nothing. And the Orioles are coming up. The volunteers at WBAL Radio's call for action want to remind you of your... We have the opportunity to point out something of interest to all youngsters and to their parents in the Baltimore area beginning Saturday morning at 11 o'clock here at Memorial Stadium under the direction of the Oriole Advocates. Oriole ball players Pat Dobson, Merv Rettenmund, Don Buford, L. Ron Hendricks, and Mark Belanger will serve as instructors at a baseball clinic. All youngsters are welcome. Don't have to belong to the Junior Oriole program. However, the youngsters must be adequately chaperoned by adults. Uh, 11 o'clock is the time for the clinic to secure admission here at the stadium. Saturday morning at 11 a.m., enter the stadium through gate W6. Okay, Bill. Well, Chuck, here is Mark Belanger, the man from New England, beginning at the bottom of the first inning. He's worked high by right-hander Jim Maloney. Belanger, Blair, and Boog Powell to begin the birds uh, in the bottom of the first inning in game two. The wind-up by Maloney, his 1-0 pitch. It fell right back this way and over the booth. One ball and one strike. Maloney has not made a pitching appearance since his uh, starting job against the Orioles out in Anaheim the 25th of April. That was the game uh, that the Birds defeated Maloney and won for Jim Palmer. Last score is 7-1. to one. Pitch to Belanger is 1-1. One one. It's inside. Two balls and one strike. Now Maloney, before he suffered that Achilles... Uh, injury over in the National League at Cincinnati. Probably had one of the best fastballs in the National League. He's going to gun in the 2-1. He goes inside, head high, and Belanger has to twist out of there. Three balls and one strike. Lefty Phillips uh, comes marching very quickly now out of the Angel dugout. Find out if anything is annoying uh, Jim Maloney. And we also have Jerry Stevenson move to the mound along with third baseman Ken McMillan. There's nobody up right now in the Angel bullpen. Phillips is just getting to the mound. He wants to make sure that Maloney feels okay. Again, to remind you that Maloney has not pitched since the Orioles played against the Angels in Anaheim the 25th of April. Phillips standing right there, talking and looking right at Maloney. He has Stevenson off to one shoulder plus McMullen. And the plate umpire, Jim Honachick, is going out and he's going to talk to Lefty Phillips. And Maloney is uh, flapping the arms around the mound and Maloney, I think, is asking Honachick if Maloney can make a couple of pitches into uh, his catcher, John Stevenson. Chuck? Bill, in watching through the uh, field glasses, uh, uh, Maloney uh, appears to be a little uncomfortable in the area of the right shoulder. He uh, windmilled it around a little bit, and then he bent over, put both hands on the knees, and exerted a good deal of pressure on the right knee with the right hand. And apparently he felt some kind of a twinge or discomfort on that last pitch that zoomed up and in on Belanger. And that's what brought Lefty Phillips out. But now, after a couple of tosses to Stevenson, he has indicated that he feels well enough to continue. All right, Chuck, we go back three balls and one strike. The pitch to Belanger is ball four. So the Orioles get a quick start, just as they did in the opening ball game. They have Belanger, a runner at first base. In the opening game, Schilte was the leadoff batter. He lined a base hit to right, and Schilte eventually uh, scored to get the Orioles in front. Now here's Blair. He will bat left-handed against the right-hander, Maloney. Blair appeared in the first game defensively, but did not bet. Now, McMullen has come over again to talk to Maloney, and played umper Ahanachik has come out and said, look, let's start action again. Blair is 0 for 4 in the series. He is batting at 233. The Angels have Spencer. Hold on Belanger's lead at first base. Here's a let up inside, ball one. We must mention that Maloney came through very nonchalantly in his follow-through in that first pitch to Blair. He's watching Belanger lead. 
His 1-0 is thrown inside low. Two balls and no strikes. There is nobody up in the Angel bullpen. There is somebody, however, right now getting a jacket off in the Angel bullpen. A quick toss to first base and Belanger's back to the bag. Two-0 pitch is in for strike one call. Lloyd Allen, youngster, is up uh, throwing now quickly in the Angel bullpen. Blair is two balls, one strike against Maloney. <laughs> Maloney is looking to Belanger's lead. Now fires Blair, who swings and doesn't get it. Two balls and two strikes. One thing about Maloney, he's got great size, six feet two, 214 pounds. Here's a curve that's lined to the first baseman, Spencer, right up the bag. He immediately steps on the bag, doubled up Belanger. Except Maloney's great deal, having played in a lazy line of right at first baseman, Spencer, on the double play maneuver. Two away, the base is empty now, and Powell is up. Powell had an RBI in the first game to go into a first place tie for the American League leadership and run batted in with Killebrew. Boog with six homers, batting a 225. He's got one for six in the series. Spencer is flying just inside the first base foul line and deep against Powell. The wind up by Maloney and his first pitch is a curve looped down the right field side. It is going to be a fair ball. Played in the corner by Canigliaro and Powell holds it first base. A looping base hit inside the right field foul line by Boog. So a runner back aboard again at first base. With two away, the batter will be Frank Robinson. When the Orioles faced Maloney out in California, uh, they told us that Maloney's pitches had very little movement to them. Here's a swing and a miss on a high delivery by Frank Robinson. One strike to Frank with Rettenmund on deck. Frank batting a 309, a home run and 10 RBIs. Powell not held by Spencer as he makes his lead at first base. The one strike pitch is down the middle for the strike called 0-2. Deep center to Frank Robinson is Roger Repo. A glove shake by Maloney into Stevenson's side. 0-2 to Frank. It's a curve and it's inside. One ball and two strikes. Frank had a completely get out of the batter's box. Naturally, uh, these two ex-teammates know a little bit about each other because Maloney played all through the Cincinnati chain before coming over to the American League. He's outside and low. Two balls and two strikes. Maloney was first with the big club in Cincinnati in 1960 and stayed with them for good for 1962 through last year. Two balls, two strikes to Frank. Powell leading at first base. The next pitch to Robinson is outside low. It gets right by the catcher, Stevenson, and it permits Powell to advance easily to second base on the Maloney wild pitch. Three balls, two strikes to Frank. Maloney's greatest season, and he was a teammate of Frank Robinson that year, 1963, when he won 23 games and dropped seven. Powell at second base and a pretty good lead. 3-2 to Frank Robinson. Is low, ball four. Boob stays at second. Frank will now occupy first. And the batter is Merv Rettenmund. And here comes Lefty Phillips coming first of all to his catcher, John Stevenson. And now he's calling over Jim Honachick. Phillips now is going to his bullpen, and that means uh, Lloyd Allen. Allen will come on with Boog at second, with Frank Robinson at first. Maloney gets a very quick first inning exit, and Allen will come on to face Merv Rettman. So, as we wait for the new pitcher, Lloyd Allen, to make his way to the mound, we'd like to pause for a moment.
Well, the very quick uh, pitching change, uh, manager Lefty Phillips has taken uh, Jim Maloney out of the ball game, and uh, though we're a long way from the mound up here, it appears to me that uh, Maloney is having some discomfort, perhaps in the lower back, and uh, certainly he doesn't deserve that. He's had more than his share of physical problems here of late, and uh, it is kind of a coolish, damp sort of an evening, and I think that Phillips decides that to get him out of the ball game would certainly be the better thing in the long run for Jim Maloney, who has pitched two-thirds of the first inning, uh, allowed to get walked through, didn't strike anybody out. And here comes a young man who'll be 21 years old this coming Saturday, Lloyd Allen. Uh, he is now appearing in his 10th game for the California Angels, shows a record of two victories without a defeat. He has, all of his pitching has been in relief. He has not started a ball game. Allen has pitched a total of 12 innings, allowed nine base hits, five earned runs, has walked but five and struck out 15 in 12 innings, and has been mixed uh, for two home runs. He was acquired by the Angels as their number one draft choice of 1968. He won his first big league uh, game in 70, a 5-1 to win over the White Sox September the 30th. Started that one, went seven and two-third innings, seven hits in the run. Second major league start, uh, the first one in October of 1969 at Kansas City. First 1970 appearance for the Angels was against the Orioles August the 11th, a three-inning relief stint, and he allowed the Birds but one hit and one run. Bill? Well, Lloyd Allen comes on for Maloney with Oriole runners Powell and Frank Robinson at second and first, and here's Merv Rettman batting at 250 and hitless in the series. Allen's wins, his pair of victories in relief, one against the Orioles in the series at Anaheim, the other one over the Indians in Pasquale. Swing and a miss, strike one. That Allen win was as the result of the grand slam home run by Roger Rifos in the ninth inning against Dick Hall. Powell at second base, not being bothered by either shortstop O'Brien or second baseman Alomar. Frank, a good edge at first base because Spencer is playing deep. Right-hander Allen looking backwards, and now pours his next pitch into Merv. Strike two, called, right between Merv's knees and belt. Two strikes to Retma. If Merv uh, can pick somebody up and deliver here in the bottom of the first inning, we will also have Frank Robinson, uh, Brooks Robinson back. Frank is at first base and leading. Powell again, good edge at second base. Lloyd Allen watching Stevenson. He's two strikes against Retma. Allen sets right to the belt, delivers, swinging a ground ball over the mound, and then feared by the leaping Allen, throws in time to Spencer. Allen helps himself out with a good leaping stab of that hot ground ball over the mound. Rettman retired, and so are the Orioles. No runs, one hit, they leave two. At the end of the first inning of game two, Orioles nothing, Angels nothing. A lot of you are uh, interested in... Uh Attending the Oriole Oakland ball game Sunday afternoon, uh, Mother's Day, and it will be a bat day, meaning all youngsters 14 and under, accompanied by a paying adult, will receive a free Little League approved baseball bat. Uh, might be concerned about the availability of tickets. Well, plenty of them are available, and at noon on Sunday, an additional 17,000 general admission and 2,000 bleacher tickets will go on sale here at the stadium Sunday afternoon. So if you're coming out Sunday, we suggest that you perhaps leave a little early and avoid some of that last-minute rush. Bill? In the Angels' second inning, Tony C. Canigliaro against Dobson. He fast falls in low, ball one. Rockell Welch's Newport Beach, California neighbor, Tony Canigliaro, who is three for eight in the series. The 1-0 delivery by Pat Dobson is popped up. It's right around the plate. Getting rid of the mask, Hendricks and foul territory has put it away for out number one. Canigliaro fouls out. And here's Roger Repose. Repose did not play in the opening game uh, due to the start by left-hander McNally. He is appearing in the second game uh, against the Oriole right-handed starter, Pat Dobson. Speaking of Pat, this is his sixth start, and he's trying to gain his second win and go two and two on the year. Now the outfield turns to right against Roger Repose, batting at 292. First pitch by Dobson is low, ball one.
stops in much the same as the Oriole left-handed releaser of Pete Rickard. Stands very erect with the feet right together at the rubber. Extends the arms, winds to the side. He rips in the 1-0. Inside corner, he snaps it off to get strike one. One ball, one strike to repose with McMullen, the next batter. Jim Honachick is calling balls and strikes in the second game, helped out by Larry McCoy, Jim Odom, and Marty Springstead. The next delivery to repose. He lines a shot into center field. Here's Blair coming in, coming in, coming in. He won't get to it. It drops in for a base hit in front of Blair and the left fielder, Rettman. Blair had to give it the long gallop because he was yanked over into right center against repose. Hit number one by the Angels in the nightcap. The one-out job, the center field by Repo, brings up Ken McMullen. McMullen is one for six in the two games of the series so far. Waving a bat and kneeling on deck is the catcher, John Stevenson. McMullen, the right-hand batting third baseman, stands erect and goes to the front of the box. Dobson with a hard move to first base, but repose back in time. <laughs> Belanger, the shortstop, opens the hole on the left side of the infield. Belanger is shade to his glove side against McMullen. Dobson sets and deals. Here's a foul just to the left of the boot. One strike to Ken McMullen. Orioles won the first game for McNally's fifth win by a score of 3-1 to as McNally with four hitless uh, innings to start the ball game, then faced four hits the rest of the way. Of course, the Orioles won the first game of the series as Palmer went the route by a score of 4-1 to as they beat Murphy. One strike to McMullen with one on and one gone in the top of the second inning. A little outside. One ball and one strike. Another move to first base, and repose is back in time. Remember now, Dick Williams and the Oakland A's, Sal Bando, Reggie Jackson, Campy Campanaris, Dick Green, Rick Monday. All the Oakland A's with a three-game stand begin tomorrow night. The 1-1 delivery is hit down the right field side and going foul. One ball and two strikes. The series opens tomorrow night with the A's four-game winner, Jim Hunter, taking on the undefeated and two-game winner, Mike Cuellar. Then Jim Palmer, 5-0, and pitches Saturday at 7 o'clock against Chuck Dobson. And the top pitcher in the American League, Vita Blue, who has seven wins against only one defeat, will go against Grant Jackson. One ball, two strikes to the swinging McMullen. Here's the next pitch by Dobson. A high curve. Two balls and two strikes. Two-step lead by Repos off first base. McMullen on a 2-2. Checks his swing on an outside breaking ball. Three balls and two strikes. Dobson a little bit annoyed. He thought he might have had the outside corner of the plate. Dobson takes a stroll for himself now over to the first base side of the mound. Dobson stretching up and now down right to the belt. On three and two, Repose is running. The pitch is lofted out into center field. Blair going back and getting there. Blair in a couple of steps for the putout. Two men gone on the top of the second inning. Repose has returned to first base. Here's Stevenson now, the angel catcher. He got three base hits in the opening game to this series. And he made his average go up to 333. The Angels, uh, just like the Orioles, are blessed with three catches. They've got Moses and Torborg plus Stevenson. Repose is running. The pitch is outside. Hendricks throws to Belanger. It is in time at second base to get the sliding repose, and that retires the side. At the end of an inning and a half, it's the Orioles nothing, the Angels nothing. 7 WBAL Baltimore. Fresno, California's right-hander, Lloyd Allen, to go against the Orioles now in the bottom of the second inning, and he'll work to Brooks Robinson, Elrod Hendricks, and Jerry Devaney. 
Lloyd Allen, six feet one, 185 pounds. Brooks, one for six in the series, batting at 227. The youngster Allen goes into his lineup and makes his pitch to Brooks. High ball one. Here's the 1-0 to Brooks. Low and outside, two balls and no strike. Last year, uh, after winning 12 games with the El Paso Club in the Texas League, Lloyd Allen was selected to the Texas League's All-Star team. Dealing Brooks, 2-0. Inside with a fastball, three balls and no strike. It's glad when he was a high schooler in a little bit better than 300 innings. Came pretty close to picking up 600 strikeouts. 3 and all. Down the middle, strike one call. In 152 innings with that El Paso club last year, he struck out 116, but did have a high earned run average. Allen still trying to make his way back against Brooks Robinson in three balls and one strike. He's only been pitching pro baseball since 1968. Here's a foul out of play. Three and two. He was with both the Idaho Falls and the San Jose Clubs in 1968, with the San Jose, the Hawaii, and the Angels in 1969, and then with El Paso and the Angels last season. He and Brooks Robinson at three balls and two strikes. The windup and the youngsters 3-2. Inside, ball four. That's the third walk issued by Angel Pitching. Starter Jim Maloney, who worked only two-thirds of the first inning, gave a walk to Belanger and Frank Robinson. And now Allen does the same to Brooks Robinson as we start the bottom of the second inning. Here's Elrod batting at 163. Spencer will be holding on Brooks's lead at first base. The look to Brooks's lead. The pitch to Hendricks is fouled straight back. Hendricks batting right now, and he'll have uh, utility infielder Jerry Devannon, who starts the second game at second base, coming after him. Allen leaning way forward, hiding that ball, and now stretches. Looks to first base. Hendricks 0-1. Fouls another pitch off. This one over the Oriole dugout. Two strikes to Hendricks. Said if we get a decent break, just a decent break in the weather on Sunday, the fact that we've got Vita Blue, the fact that we've got the Oakland A's, the fact that we've got that day on Sunday, we ought to have some kind of turnout on Sunday afternoon. Another two-strike offering. Is low, one and two. And that, of course, uh, reminds us that on Sunday, if you make plans to come to the ballpark, please include in your plans to just come out here a little bit earlier than normal. Spencer is not holding on Brooks Robinson's lead at first base, but he's only a step back of Brooks. Now, with Allen taking a little bit too much time, Hendricks has decided to move out of the batter spot. Allen, uh, not quite as tall as the veteran fellow who started this ball game, namely Jim Maloney, and nor is he quite as heavy. He's built more along the slender line. One and two. Low, two balls, and two strikes. A good part of the Angels' early success, especially when they ripped off early in the season a seven-game victory streak, uh, was due in part to some great relief pitching. 2-2 Two -two to Hendricks. Foul right back to the screen. Matter of fact, during that seven-game victory string, uh, the Angels were on the road. They played three games against the Western Division champion Minnesota Twins and won all three games at Minnesota. 
Brooks watching Spencer right back of his lead at first base. Two balls, two strikes to the batter, Hendricks. He swings and strikes out. One gone in the bottom of the second inning. That'll bring up Jerry Devan, and he's been up officially just once and shows that they fit in that one official trip. Dave Johnson, at least for the moment, is sitting out the start of game two. A couple of fellows in the first game set out the start of game one. Uh, like Belanger, who came on to play short for Simone late in the ball game. Like Blair, who went to center field. And then Rettenmund moved late in the ball game from center to right field to showcase sat down the rest of the ball game. Allen works to Vannon, who hits a foul out of play to our right. Devannon is eighth in the order. He's got Dobson to follow him. Allen taking just his sweet time working against all Oriole batters here in the bottom of the second inning. His 0-1 is low and tight. One ball and one strike. You may have heard uh, Chuck and I comment during the Western Road Trip about Vida Blue during our game at Oakland, and I'm sure you've read a lot in both Baltimore papers and papers around the Oriole Network about Vida Blue. Well, you'll have the chance Sunday afternoon to see for yourself. 1-1 to Devannon is bounced past the mound of the shortstop. O'Brien loses it, recovers, and has no throw. So Devannon safe at first, plus Brooks at second. It was hit over the mound. Allen could not get up for it. O'Brien charged it on the grass in front of second base, got the glove down, lost it out of the glove, and has been charged with an error. So on the boot by O'Brien, Brooks at second, Devannon at first base, and the batter is Pat Dobson. Second baseman Alomar has come over to talk right behind the mound with Lloyd Allen. Now, Dobson is known as an outstanding butter, and let's see if Dobson is up there with one out on orders to try to advance Brooks to third and Devannon to second base. Spencer is playing tightly and coming in at first base. Dobson does butt out towards third. Fielded by McMullen, he throws to Alomar covering at first base. The sacrifice executed. Brooks goes to third, Devannon to second. That's the second out, and the batter on the spot will be Mark Palancia. Dobson tossed out on his butt out towards third, halfway between the plate and the bag by McMullen to second baseman Alomar. Belanger was walked by starter Maloney last inning. Stevenson, the catcher now, reminds his McMullen, O'Brien, Alomar, Spencer infielder, two men out. First base is open with Blair on deck. Belanger batting a 269, has two hits in this series. He has five RBIs for the year. No score in the bottom of inning two. Allen out of a full motion delivers Belanger, who pops it up towards first baseman Spencer. Spencer on the foul line in foul territory for the third out. No runs, no hits, one angel error, two men left in the second game after two innings. Baltimore nothing, California nothing. Well, Bill pointed out uh, how all of us are looking forward to uh, not only good weather uh, for the weekend and the uh, arrival of the Open A's and the chance to see Vita Blue on Sunday, and uh, we should have a very fine turnout. And uh, whenever we do, we know we have a lot of people from out of town coming in over the weekend. As a matter of fact, tonight, Bill, we have two busloads. Eagles Lodge 1562 from Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, journey down here to watch the Orioles and the California Angels, and we're so glad they took the time to let us know that they were here. Well, Pat Dobson, Chuck, begins his work in the top of the third against the catcher, John Stevenson. Outside, ball one. Stevenson was at the plate last inning with two out and repos running to second base without stealing on a great throw uh, by Hendricks to Belanger at second base. One over the left-hand batting, Stevenson. Here's a looping fly ball into shallow right. Frank Robinson, a long run, and he won't get to it. A looping single into shallow right by John Stevenson. That's his fourth hit in this series. He had three in the opening game on Tuesday night. Hit number two against uh, Pat Dobson. Here's the shortstop, Pitt O'Brien. O'Brien had to come into the first game uh, kind of early. Matter of fact, he was the shortstop in the third inning after Fergosi asked to sit out that first game. 
Dobson check of first. His pitch to O'Brien is a strike, then to the knee. O'Brien batting 241. The outfield to O'Brien, not too deep, and it plays the right-hand batter straight away. Here's a ground foul down the first base side. Two strikes to Sid O'Brien. Off and on uh, during the season, you may hear us refer to uh, Pat Dobson as the Fabulous Snake. That was a nickname he was given out in San Diego last year by Duke Snyder. The 0-2 pitch is low, one and two. Stevenson leads at first base, and he's held there by Powell. Dobson looks that way. Now he throws to the plate one and two. A swing and a miss at that snake pitch of his, that good breaking ball. That's Dobson's third strikeout. He got Alomar and Spencer in the first inning, and now he adds O'Brien to that list. And here's the pitcher, Lloyd Allen. has been out only once officially this year and without a base hit. First pitch to the right-hand batting Allen is way outside. Brooks was charging a bit from third. No score top of the third after the Orioles 3-1 win in the first game on uh, Dave McNally's four-hit route going win for his fifth victory of the season. One ball, no strikes to Lloyd Allen. The next pitch by Dobson. Here's a full cut and a ground ball taken by Brooks. Throws to Devannon, one out there. Devannon to Powell. It's a double play. 5-4-3. Get Stevenson at second and Allen at first base to conclude the top of the fifth inning. No runs, one hit, nobody left. The end of two and a half innings. Orioles nothing, Angels nothing. The Oriole baseball student cards are now being distributed in senior high schools and colleges throughout Baltimore City and County through the principal's offices or the physical education department. Now, these cards, designed for senior high school and college-age students, entitle the bearer to purchase a $2 upper reserve seat for just $1 to most Oriole home games. It's a very fine opportunity for high school students and college students, and uh, we see more and more of these young people in the ballpark. Looking ahead, uh, even beyond the Oakland series, next Monday night, the Orioles open a three-game series against the Kansas City Royals, and on that evening, all servicemen in uniform will be admitted free to the general admission area. And as an added treat, the Marine Corps Drum and Bugle Corps will perform before the ball game. So. In the bottom of the third, against uh, the Angel reliever Lloyd Allen, Paul Blair, Boog Powell, and Frank Robinson, Blair is batting right-handed against Lloyd Allen. Strike with a breaking pitch. Chuck, if that's the same Marine Drum and Bugle Corps, I think it is. I'm hopeful it's the one from Washington. If that's the same one, they have to be one of the great Drum and Bugle Corps I have ever heard. I had the privilege of hearing them during the winter in a banquet over in Virginia. Breaking ball. Swung out and missed by Blair. Did not check the swing in time. No balls and two strikes. Blair batted against Maloney in the first inning. He lined into a double play. Allen ahead of Paul at 0-2. He'd be followed by Boog and Frank. No score. Game two, bottom of the third. Allen making Blair wait. Now he gets to work with his 0-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. He strikes out Blair. Two strikeouts for the 20-year-old youngster, Lloyd Allen. Boog Powell pacing his way up to the plate now. Boog uh, wrapped a base hit to right field in the first inning. Now the Angels uh, believe that Lloyd Allen has developed a little bit quicker than they thought he would. And although he has been used uh, this season as a reliever and figures to be used that way, at least for the time being, the Angels hope that in the future, Allen will be one of their starters. Pitching Powell with one away and the bases empty. He goes outside. The Boog, one ball and no strike. Allen, one of the bright uh, newcomers as far as reliefers are concerned, at least in the American League this year. We saw a fine young reliefer at Kansas City, a right-hander by the name of Jim York. 
low to Booth. Two balls and no strikes. Of course, York's uh, physical appearance and also his delivery a lot different from this is Lloyd Allen. York is a much bigger and broader right-hander and kind of a side armor and also a submariner. Allen trailing Powell on the scoreboard count 2-0. and oh. Kicks and deals. Jack swing, but he commits himself. Two balls and one strike. O'Brien, the shortstop, just a couple of inches in from the rim of the outfield grass and over a bit towards second base. Now, two and one. Swings and hits a line base hit to the right field corner. It's going to roll off the wall. Boog is taking a big turn, heads for second base. Canigliao's throw is to the outfield side of the bag, and Boog is in sliding with a two-bagger. He rips a double to the wall in right field, his fifth two-bagger of the year. So Boog perhaps is the tie-breaking run at second base, one gone in the bottom of the third, and Frank Robinson trying to pick up Boog. Boog with a two-for-two nightcap. When Frank Robinson walked in the first inning, that had the exit sign posted for the starter, Jim Maloney. Hit number one off Allen. Hit number two in the ball game and both by Boo. Allen looking back to Powell's lead. Pitches Frank Robinson. Low for ball one. Right fielder Canigliaro playing Frank Robinson a bit over towards the right field. So the power alley in right center between repose and Tony C wide open. The 1 0 delivery is lined to the right field foul line and out of play foul. One ball and one strike. Now, a lot of fellows, when they go to right field, depend on outside pitches. But Frank Robinson's eyes are so good and his bat is so quick that he can take, as he did just then, a knee-high pitch down the middle of the plate to right field. One ball, one strike to Frank. With one gone, Boog off second base. Here's another foul out of play. One of the great compliments we heard about Frank Robinson uh, this season came during a special luncheon that we had the privilege of attending during our road trip into Detroit. When uh, Earl Weaver, his manager, said that Frank has just as much speed as he had a couple of years ago, has just as good an eye and reflexes as he, as he had a couple of years ago. He's behind this youngster, Allen. One ball and two strikes. Powell's lead at second. Here's a foul to our right. Still one and two. Well, one of the box seat patrons, uh, somewhat frustrated, just extends the arms, but frustrated or not, He's got that good Oriole smile on his face. He had a good shot at the foul ball. Now waves to a couple of his friends as he lost the foul ball. I'm sure he'll get one again. Allen paying attention right now to his catcher, Stevenson. Now looks back to Boo. One, two pitch. Here's a foul deep to the screen. Center fielder Repose uh, had been shading Frank Robinson. And uh, now Repose just about plays in dead center field. Youngster Allen making Frank Robinson wait just as he made Powell wait quite a bit. One, two again. Fouled again off to our right. Well, Frank has had pitch thrown to his letters, jammed to his hands. Pitch to his knees right over the middle of the plate, and he just doesn't have the one he really likes. One ball and two strikes. Standing on deck is Merv Rettman. No score in the bottom of the third inning. And the nightcap to this doubleheader. The 
this is quite a parallel with the young rookie Lloyd Allen against the veteran Frank Robinson. Okay, one and two again. Here's a line base hit to left field. Here's Powell turning third. Alex Johnson throwing home. It's from Cutter to Sandra Cullen. And the Orioles lead one to nothing. Robinson was his, it was his 11th run by it in. Powell scores from second base. Frank finally got the pitch he wanted and ropes the base hit to left. Frank at first on the RBI base hit, and the batter will be Merv Retina. One to nothing. The Oriole lead after the first game win now is in the bottom of the third. Rettman was the first batter facing Allen in relief on the first inning, and he bounced out to Allen at the mound. Frank's lead at first base, double checked by Spencer. Here's a foul right off the end of Merv's back. One run home, one man on, and one away in the bottom of the third. The shortstop O'Brien and the second baseman Alomar tighten a bit towards the middle of the infield and right to the bag. So the hole is a big gaping hole between O'Brien, the shortstop, and third baseman McMullen. The 0 1 offering is in for the strike called 0 2. The one thing above other things we have noticed about Allen. He is not what you would call overpoweringly fast, but he is what you would call sneaky fast. That fastball of his comes in kind of late at you, and you don't have a too good a look at it. No ball, two strikes to Rettenmund. The two-strike delivery is hit to right field, a long run for the right fielder, Canigliaro, coming to the foul line, and it drops in the first row of the box seat, down in right field. Rhett Munn stays at 0-2 against Lloyd Allen. Stevenson now has walked to the mound as uh, the rest of the Angels wait for Alomar to come back towards second and also wait for Canigliaro to go back into right field after his long run on Rhett Munn's foul ball. Stevenson now has had his words uh, with Lloyd Allen. Allen begins to hit the rubber, so that uh, gives Frank Robinson a lead he wants at first base. Still 0-2. Here it is. Swing and a foul tip that's handled uh, for the third strike by Cassius Stevenson. Three strikeouts in relief for Lloyd Allen to this inning. And the batter is Brooks Robinson, who walked in the second inning. Brooks, a home run, eight RBIs, and an average of 227. Frank Robinson still being held by Spencer at first base. The set to the belt by Allen. He pitches inside. It also hits Frank. It's uh, Brooks Robinson's bat. Brooks trying to jerk the bat away and could not in time. So strike one on the checking foul tip. Ground ball on one hop to the first baseman. Spencer comes up with it cleanly, and he makes the unassisted put out. The Orioles go ahead in the third. One run, two hits, and they leave Frank Robinson after three innings. Baltimore one, California nothing. In the National League up in Montreal tonight, it's Houston three, Montreal nothing at the end of an inning and a half. Dierker for Houston and Renko for Montreal. Cardinals and the Phillies were rained out later tonight. Cincinnati will be in Los Angeles. The Cubs and the Mets were rained out this afternoon. The American League today, Boston defeated the uh, Chicago White Sox 10 to 1. And uh, New York is at Minnesota, and the probables out there would be Sotomayor for New York and Hall for Minnesota, Bill. 
The top of the order and the top of the fourth inning. The Angels have Alomar plus Spencer and Alex Johnson. Way outside and high to Alomar. When Alomar bats right-handed, the Orioles play him straight away. When he bats left-handed, as he does right now against Dobson, they play him as a slap hitter and all the way over into left field, the opposite field. The 1-0 from Dobson. Sky call. One ball and one strike. Dobson got three strikes into Alomar in the first inning. Alomar has four hits in the series, had one of those in the first game to the doubleheader. He bats with the feet wide apart and a very pronounced close stand. Dobson's, Dobson's 1-1 is outside. Two balls and one strike. Left fielder Rettmund is, I would say, maybe eight strides inside the left field foul line. He's playing shallow, as is the center fielder Blair, well in the left center. Here's a ground ball right to Dobson. The comebacker handled neatly. Throws to Powell for out number one. One away in the Angel fourth, and here's Spencer. When Alomar looked at strike three in the first inning, Spencer was next, and Dobson struck him out swinging. Orioles won, and the Angels nothing in the top of the fourth inning. Spencer batting left-handed. First pitch by Dobson. Outside with a fastball. Now, Dobson throws fastball, curve, slider, and changeup. His best pitch would be the curve. The windup in the 1-0. There's the curve. It's too far inside. 2 and oh. Dobson born in uh, Depew, New York. That's in the western part of New York State, not too far from Buffalo. But he now resides off-season in Durham, North Carolina. 2-0 pitch. Line foul past the twisting first base coach, Fred Keenan. Speaking of the coaches, uh, there are some great pictures in this week's uh, latest edition of Sports Illustrated. Great picture of uh, Billy Hunter, also of the Angels third base coach, Rocky Bridges. 2-1 pitch to Spencer. He hits a foul right back over the booth, and we'll pause for station identification. This is the Oriole Baseball Network. For the news here, Doug Carrick, a member of Maryland's number one news team on Radio 11 WBAL in Baltimore. The count is two balls and two strikes to Jim Spencer with one man out and nobody aboard. Top of the fourth inning. Dops into the plate. With a curve cut out of mess, he strikes out Spencer for the second time and gives uh, the fabulous snake Pat Dobson now four strikeouts tonight. Two to Spencer, one to Alomar, and also a swinging third strike to O'Brien last inning. Two gone top of the fourth. Here's Alex the X, Alex Johnson. It's not too often that when Johnson's bad, you'll see too much trajectory on fly balls as his. Most of his shots are bullets and line drives. A curve. He swings and doesn't get it. One strike to Johnson with Canigliaro on deck. The American League batting champion of 1970. One strike down to the winding Pat Dobson. A curve is too low. One ball, one strike. Dobson not only has the straight change, his straight change is a palm ball, he also changes on the breaking pitch. He goes outside to Alex Johnson, two balls and one strike. Dobson just starts to nervously fiddle with the peak of the cap, also the back of the cap. He rears back and throws a curve cut out in there. Two and two. Dobson's given up two base hits, one to Repos in the second, plus one to Stevenson in the top of the third. He's got the bases empty and two away. Kicks and deals two and two. Low and outside. Full count to Alex Johnson. Waving a bat, kneeling on deck is Tony C. The windup and the 3-2 to Johnson. Foul to the screen. Johnson staying right in the batter's box, flicking and waving the bat. To Do Blown outside. Full count to Alex Johnson. Waving a bat, kneeling on deck is Tony C. 
the windup and the three two to Johnson. Foul to the screen. Johnson staying right in the batter's box, flicking and waving the bat. To Johnson's next pitch. Fouled away again to the upper deck. Johnson right now doing against Johnson what Frank Robinson did quite a bit of against Lloyd Allen in the bottom of the third. The wind up, three and two once more. Here's a fly ball, deep left center field. Blair is racing back, 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 and he makes the catch in front of the warning track in deep left center. Long running galloping catch by Paul Blair retires Alex Johnson and the side. At the end of three and a half innings, Orioles one, Angels nothing. Well, 68 pages containing more than 350 pictures, plus biographical material and all of the Oriole players. Complete review of last year's thrilling World Series win over the Cincinnati Reds, the section for the gourmet cooks, and much, much more. To get your copy of the 1971 Baltimore Oreo yearbook, you send a dollar twenty-five cents your name and address to Yearbook Memorial Stadium, Baltimore 21218, and you will be so happy that you did. So, here's the rod, Chuck, in the bottom of the fourth inning. Oh, Rod Hendricks against Lloyd Allen. He goes outside with a rod ball one. Allen struck out Hendricks in the second inning. So we got the lower third of the birdler here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Hendricks plus Cavanaugh and Dobson. Orioles got a run last inning for Dobson, and they lead one to nothing. Lloyd Allen winding and delivering 1-0. and Flag on the outside corner to Hendricks. One ball and one strike. Here's the next pitch now by this young right-hander. Swing and a foul, tip, squeezed by Cassie Stevenson. One ball and two strikes. Devannon mm-hmm. is kneeling on deck. We'll see him after Hendricks here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Allen, both feet right in the middle of that rubber, rocks back. In he comes, one and two. Low, two balls, and two strikes. Just one thing to say about the right side of the Angel infield. Deep with Alomar to the outfield grass. Spencer also backing up near the outfield grass. And the outfield is around the right. Deep right center repose, deep right Canigliaro. Allen, two and two to Hendricks. Ball three is high. Three balls and two strikes. Hendricks thus far in four appearances in this series is hitless. And say the big man in this second game right now is Drew Powell. He's on a two for two day in the second game. Three and two to Elrod. He grounds the foul over towards the Angel dugout. It was Powell who began the third inning rally with a double and then scored on Frank Robinson's base hit. Orioles have three hits against uh, the Angel pitching. They had one off Maloney, and they had two off Allen. Allen winding, and here he is, three and two to Hendricks. Ground foul past first base coach Stoller. Those uh, fine pictures we were commenting about in this week's latest edition of Sports Illustrated, and most of them deal with coaches. They are more or less facial studies of the coaches around the major leagues, and among them, among the pictures in Sports Illustrated, one of third base coach Billy Hunter. Three and two again to Elrod. He hits a fly ball, deep right, but it's going to curve foul. There's one particular great picture in Sports Illustrated of the Washington bullpen coach, George Susley. And what a facial study that is. Matter of fact, what a face that is. The wind up by Allen. Three and two to the rod. He pops it up over towards the third base foul line. Comes McMullen. 
It's now going foul, and the catcher makes the put out in foul territory. Stevenson taking the foul pop up a couple of feet off the third base foul line. Hendricks has been retired. Speaking of the Washington coach, George Susie, uh, to just elaborate a little bit more, if you want to see an outstanding facial study of a man who's one of the veterans of the baseball wars, that's a picture I'm sure you will want to admire. Here's Jerry Devannon, who was safe on an error by the shortstop O'Brien in the second inning. Nobody on bottom of the fourth. Swing and a miss by Devannon, strike one. Now, it's a little tough to pick up from uh, our vantage point, high at top of the field and back of home plate. But the way some of these Orioles have been swinging, and with some success by Allen, his fastball must really be moving and dipping. One strike to Devannon. He ran up to bunt, left the bunt, and the pitch was low. One ball and one strike. The next batter, after we find out what happens to Devannon, will be pitcher Pat Dobson. 1-1 one, one to Devannon. Change up is wrapped uh, out towards third and foul. One ball, two strikes. The Orioles have had uh, rallies in every inning so far. They did play uh, the game's first run in the third. They left two on in the first, two on in the second, scored the run in the third. They're batting Devannon with one gun on the bottom of the fourth. Allen ahead, deals Devannon one and two. Swing and a miss, he strikes him out. I say this youngster has now picked up four strikeouts in less than four innings of relief. Here's Pat Dobson, who laid down a sacrifice front in the second inning. Devannon has uh, just fanned. Four strikeouts for Allen. He has struck out Hendricks, Blair, and Rettman before Devannon. Two away, bottom of the fourth inning, and nobody on. Here's the right-hander's first serve to Dobson. He hits the ground ball to second baseman. Alomar up with it cleanly, and there's the third out in the bottom of the fourth inning. At the end of four, Orioles won, Angels nothing. Well, the Astros are leading the Expos uh, four to one, and they're now going to the fourth inning. And uh, tomorrow night, the Orioles will open the gates for the Oakland A's, and Mike Cuellar, two and zero, will take on uh, Jim Hunter, four and two. Then Saturday night at seven o'clock, Jim Palmer, five wins without a defeat, will go against Chuck Dobson. And Sunday probable for the Orioles, Grant Jackson, and for the Oakland A's, the scintillating bite of blue. In the Angels' fifth inning, Canigliaro repose and McMullen. Here's a Dobson curve, and it settles outside, ball one. Canigliaro foul to catcher Hendricks in the second inning. Dobson winding and throws 1-0. Outside, two balls and no strikes. Dobson has been touched for two base hits, has fanned four, and he's got a lead of one to nothing. His 2-0 pitch to Canigliaro is a strike into Canigliaro's knee. Two balls and one strike. A 2-1 deal. It's foul to the upper deck. 2-2 two two to Tony C. Speaking as uh, Chuck has the Vita Blue, not only does he lead the American League in wins with seven, but he also leads the American League in strikeouts with 69. There's a foul off the Stingley out bat right back to the screen. If you come out Sunday to see Vita Blue, you're going to see a young left-hander with, with, without exaggeration with a great fastball. 2-2 two -two pitch. There's the Dobson curve, and it's a great curve for strike three. And Tony C. is giving Jim Honachick some lift. Five strikeouts for Dobson. I'm telling you, he threw some kind of third strike snake to Canigliaro. One gun, top of the fifth, and here's Rico. Rico signed the base hit to center field in the second inning. One 
and gone. Base is empty. Free throws have to twist away from a shoulder high pitch ball one. Dobson strikeout high uh, this season. Seven strikeouts in seven innings against the Oakland A's. That was the game that Dobson pitched against Vida Blue. He's got five strikeouts in less than five innings here tonight. The 1 0 offering to repose. Outside, a little high, two balls and no strikes. In that uh, 1 0 loss to Vida Blue and to the Oakland A's, Dobson's great pitch that night was his breaking ball, just as it has been so far tonight. He's winding and throwing 2-0 to repose. He fouls off a fastball to the upper deck. Two balls and one strike. McMullen is on deck. Dobson's win this year was uh, the win against the Yankees in this part. His defeat at the hands of the Tigers and the A's. 2-1 to repose. He fast falls in at the knees, and he gets strike two. Two balls and two strikes. I tell you, in every start that Dobson has made this year, the one thing that you have to say about him is he's really been a bear down right-handed. But tonight we would say he's bearing down like he really has not bared down before. Two and two. A swing and a miss. He strikes out repose. He has six strikeouts. Talk about fellows gritting their teeth and biting their lip and reaching back for something extra. That's the kind of pace that Dobson has been setting uh, through four and through four and two-third innings. He has just fanned now three of the last four batters, and now he meets Ken McMullen. McMullen fly to center in the second inning. High outside, ball one. Dobson and the Birds hanging on to a one nothing lead in the top of the fifth inning. The next offering to McMullen. Is that Dobson breaking pitch a strike to the knees? One ball, one strike. Stevenson waving a bat from the on-deck area. As Dobson deals, one and one. Low curve, two balls, one strike. Hendricks is sitting back in that rocking chair handling these great uh, breaking balls of Dobson. 2-1 is buzzed in. Line to right field, and it will fall in front of Frank Robinson for a base hit. Three hits now off Dobson. This one comes with two down on the top of the fifth inning, and Stevenson is up with four hits in the series. Now, the Angels tell us, at least uh, some of their traveling party, the Angels tell us that they'd like to catch a Torborg more because they feel that uh, Torborg is their best defensive catcher. They have, however, in this doubleheader, been catching Moses and Stevenson because they regard them as better hitters. A swing and a miss by this fellow Stevenson, strike one. Sal is holding with two out against McMullen's lead. Robinson in right plays Stevenson straight away. Blair in center plays him to right center. Dobson guns in the 0-1. Swing and a miss with the breaking ball right into his fist. 0-2. Stevenson has seen service with the Mets, the Cubs, and the Giants before coming over into the American League. No balls and two strikes. Belanger shading strongly to his glove side towards second base. McMullen gets his two-out lead at first base. Dobson wheels in the 0-2. Line foul, right by first base coach Keenan. Dobson had two strikeouts in the first inning. One to Alomar, another to Spencer. Fanned O'Brien in the third. Cut down Spencer swinging in the fourth. Got Canigliaro looking here on the fifth, plus Repo swinging here on the fifth. He's still ahead of Stevenson at 0-2. Dobson, leaning forward, now straightens into his set. On 0-2, Stevenson takes a late swing and fouls it to the Oriole dugout. That pitch was right over the outside corner. Stevenson felt it might be strike three called, had that late cut of the bat, and got a little piece of it.
Dobson, double checking with Hendricks signs. Fires on two again. Foul right out of Hendrick Smith. Stevenson again with a late swing at a shoulder high fastball. Just as Hendricks put up that mid shoulder high, Stevenson took that late cut. Stevenson right back deep to the box. Another two strike pitch. It's low. One and two. Dobson uh, does double duty now. He fingers up on the rosin bag, and as he does that, he also concentrates at uh, McMullen's lead at first base. And he comes one and two. Swing and a miss. He strikes out Stevenson. He gets three strikeouts in the inning. He has equaled his season strikeout high. After four and a half innings, Baltimore won. California, nothing. Well, on the American League scoreboard at Minnesota, the Yankees and Twins have just started, and the Yankees picked on Minnesota's town hall for two runs. So going to the bottom of the first inning, it's the Yankees two, Minnesota nothing. This afternoon, the Red Sox ripped the White Sox 10 to 1. Peters beat Johnson. National League day game, Cubs and Mets rained out. Night game, St. Louis to Philadelphia rained out. Houston leads Montreal 4-1 in the fifth. Reds and Dodgers later tonight. Now let's go to the bottom of the fifth inning. The Orioles lead one to nothing, and here is Chuck Johnson. With the top of the batting order, Mark Belanger, Paul Blair, Boog Powell against Lloyd Allen here in this uh, last half of the fifth inning. Hard-throwing youngster delivers, breaking pitches fouled away. Into the seats behind the plate, strike one to Mark. Belanger walked against starter Jim Maloney and then fouled out to the first baseman, Jim Spencer, against Allen. Next time on in the second inning. A run and three hits for the Orioles. No runs and three hits for the Angels. Game two, the Orioles won the first one, three to one. The pitch, low inside of the lander, ball and a strike. Oakland will be here tomorrow night. Game time is 8 o'clock. They're here again Saturday night at 7 o'clock. Sunday afternoon at 2, and it will be bat day. And the 1-1 one -one offering coming down to Belanger. Strike called as Allen found the range over the inner portion of the knees. One ball, two strikes. Speaking of Saturday, this young man will be 21 years old. Saturday. Will Lloyd Allen. The count of the ball, two strikes to Belanger. Allen uh, picks up the sign, flashed by Stevenson. And here we go. High fly ball, right field way. Canigliaro tracking it, coming up on the ball. And the Angel right fielder gloves it for the first out of the inning. One away as Belanger flies to right fielder Canigliaro, and now Paul Blair. Paul, he hit into a line drive uh, double play in the first inning, struck out in the third. We're seeing quite a few K's tonight as uh, Lloyd Allen has fanned four of the Orioles, and uh, Dobson has uh, seven scouts at his belt, a total of 11 strikeouts. We just go to the bottom of the fifth inning. Blair, a right-handed swinger to the right-hand offerings of Allen, and the young right-hander fires. Strike outside corner for knees. Well, the Red Sox won their ball game 10 to 1 this afternoon. The ball, uh, Orioles had the first game in the bag, having defeated the Angels 3 to 1, and a 1 to nothing lead here on the bottom of the fifth of game two. One strike pitch, swing and a miss, and Blair took a real big cut. 0-2, the count of the bird center field of Paul Blair, who was trying to shake off the effects of a, an attack of the virus of some sort. He was a pretty sick youngster last evening. And the two-strike pitch coming to Blair. Swing and a miss. He struck him out on a breaking ball. Number five on that column for Lloyd Allen. Two down, nobody on, and Boog Powell. He's gone two for two tonight. He had uh, a base hit against starter Jim Maloney. And then against uh, young Lloyd Allen, he lashed a line drive double off the wall in the right field corner in the third inning. And this big man, said, with a play right in front of him, watching Canigliaro on the track of that ball, just decided that he was going to go for two. And he made it. It's about a step to spare. It proved to be very important as Frank followed with a single to left field, but scored Powell. And that's been it. Allen spits to Booth. Low and outside, ball one. The big man striding, started the swing and held back. 
Three poles, very deep, and off toward the alley in right center. Deep straight away in right field, can the arrow. And the angel infield is backed off uh, almost to the outfield grass all the way around, with the exception of third baseman McMullen. Powell taking a little time to flex his right leg. He may have kind of jammed that slightly on that slide to second in the third inning. 1-0, and the count to Boog. High and outside with a failing fastball. 2-0 to Boog Powell. Allen's 2-0 to Boog Powell. Strike call. Right above the knees in the inside portion. 2-1 and one now to Boog. Still as mentioned, this is a very fine-looking youngster, is Lloyd Allen. And certainly the Angels are hopeful that he will develop into one of their starters. He looks like he's got pretty good equipment. 2-1, the count to Boog. Allen, the right-hander, ready to go. Here's the pitch. High foul out of play, third base side, two and two. In the Orioles' three to one victory over the Angels in the first game tonight, Dave McNally won his fifth ball game, and Andy Messersmith was charged with a loss. Two balls, two strikes, two out, nobody on. And ready with a 2-2 to Boog. High foul out of play in the upper deck. Try to remember now, Saturday night we've got an early ball game for you. It'll start at 7 o'clock Saturday night. And it should be just a great afternoon for Oriole baseball on Sunday. Two and two, the count to Powell. Two out and nobody on. Allen to the move and the right-handed pitch. Curved him and struck him out. Swing and a miss and Powell goes down. Six strikeouts now for the Angel right-hander. And at the end of five, Baltimore one, California nothing. Here are the Angels coming out against uh, Pat Dobson in the top of the sixth inning. Orioles leading one to nothing, and O'Brien will be the leadoff batter. Swing and a ground ball hit towards shortstop Belanger. He grabs right off the right shoulder, guns that throw to Powell, and O'Brien is the first out of the inning. Through the first five innings, Pat Dobson, to give you an idea how this uh, fine yes, right-hander is going, has only faced 16 men. Right now, we pause briefly for station identification. This is the Baltimore Oriole Baseball Network. This is Don Spikes, inviting you to join me at 7.35 morning, Monday through Friday, here on Radio 11 WBAL in Baltimore. Here is Lloyd Allen with a swing and a foul into the upper deck, strike one. Dobson, uh, one and two on the year, and his two defeats, well, in one of them, his teammates were able to get only one run off Lolich, and in the other one, they were shut out completely by Veda Blue. Swing and a high foul ball, maybe out of play off the first base side, and it is. So the count now is two strikes for Lloyd Allen. Both Bill and I have been talking a good little bit about this Oakland uh, left-hander, Vita Blue. And it'll be a little while before you get a chance to see him. And uh, we sincerely believe that he is one of the finest young prospects to come along in the American League for some time. And you take a look at that 7-1 record and 70 strikeouts, and I guess he might be forced to agree with a somewhat pitch. Curve inside, ball one, one and two. Dodson has the sign. The right hand is one two offering to Lloyd Allen. Curved ball and a strike three of call. That is number eight in the strikeout column for Pat Dodson. Two gone and nobody on. And here is uh, Sandy Alomar. The only fellow from the lineup now that have not felt the sting of the Dodson strikeout pitch would be Alex Johnson and Ken McMullen. Two 
down. Nobody on. Sandy Alomar. Switch hitter, a left-hander against Dodson. The first pitch on the way. Cut on fly ball. Center field. Blair's got a long way to go. Going hard to the glove side. Back, back. And is there to make the catch to retire Alomar. As a left-handed batter, he pulled the ball into center field. And Blair, who was very shallow and way over in the alley and left center, had a long run to catch up to it. Three up, three down. At the end of five and a half, score. Baltimore one. California nothing. Not only is uh, Sunday a big day for all youngsters, because naturally, as you've heard, that's that day, but Saturday is also a big day. A special clinic here at the ballpark starting at 11 o'clock, featuring Pat Dobson, tonight's pitcher, along with Merv Rettman, Don Buford, Elrod Hendricks, and Mark Belanger. They will all serve as instructors for the Oriole Clinic Saturday at 11, and you're all invited. Well, let's look at Frank Robinson as we go to the last half of the sixth inning. Frank, uh, first inning walk and a run-producing single in the third. Allen is blown away to Frank. Ball one. Allen with a long, hard look to uh, Johnny Stevenson, his catcher, now delivers one nothing. Swing a line drive, base hit over the shortstop and out in the left field. And Frank is two for two tonight. That and now will be Merv Rettman. And Merv is 0 for 2 in tonight's contest. He made a bid for a base hit in the first inning. Sharp, tight bouncer headed back through the middle. And Lloyd Allen was soaring up into the air and made a fine stab to uh, take a base hit away from Rettman. Then against Allen in the third inning, Rettman was a strikeout victim. Lloyd is fan six of the birds. Frank with a pretty fair lead at first base. Spencer holds with him over that way, and Allen hits the seven and then throws. Rettman faked the bunt and took the pitch low and outside. Ball one. Any of you have any influence with the weatherman? Hmm. Kind of like warm weather is illegal. We just can't seem to find it. One ball, no strike. Allen ready. Check Frank. Throws. Rettman looks. Strike called at the knees, outside portion. One ball, one strike to Merv. Well, maybe after that western swing where we had that horrible weather that we might, you know, just get away from it by coming home. One ball, one strike to Rettman. Allen delivers, the bunt is on, it's bunted, popped up foul, and out of the reach of the catcher, Stevenson, who was breaking toward the box seat. Well, some gentleman down there in the front row of the boxes. Uh, I don't know whether he was reaching for the foul ball that bounced into the seats or whether he just intended to try and hit it back in, in among some youngsters sitting behind him. That's the way it ended anyway. He just reached for it and bounced off his hand, went back about six rows. One ball, two strikes to Rettenmon. Frank at first, nobody out. We're in the last of the sixth inning. The Orioles won, the Angels nothing. Baltimore won the first game three to one. Allen's look for the sign. And now the right-hander is ready to go. Here's the pitch. Fly ball, well hit, right field. Canigliaro back on the warning track. Canigliaro is there. Makes the catch to retire Rettenmon. One away with Frank holding first, and the batter now will be Brooks Robinson. Walked in the second inning, and uh, Mr. Spencer made some kind of a stop to take a base hit away from Brooks in the third. Brooks had a big hit in that first game of uh, the doubleheader tonight. Two out single that broke a 1 1 tie. Good finish. Allen, who's been pitching in relief of Maloney since the first inning, delivers low ball one. pitch to Brooks Robinson. Ground ball hit off the third base side. It's by McMullen out of the left field for the base knock. Frank Robinson's on his way to third. The throw going to third base. It is not in time. It gets by the third baseman and Frank is safe. Another example of the brilliance of a Frank Robinson. A ground single in the hole between third and short. Alex Johnson on the wet outfield grass charging in on it. Frank with a play in front of him. Challenge Alex. 
and took that extra base where now the runner is at third and the sacrifice fly could get the run in. The wild pitch could get it in. The pass ball, not to mention the base hit. But another fine example of base running on the part of Frank Robinson from first to third on a ground single in the hole to left field. Brooks at first base, Frank at third base, one out, and Hendricks at the plate. Hendricks struck out and fouled out to the catcher. The ballpark comes to life as the pitch is taken low for a ball. 5,786 paid at the ballpark tonight, and I'll tell you something, they're real baseball fans, because this is not the kind of a night that you pick to go to the ballpark. 1-0, the count to Elrod Hendricks. Allen is ready to go, and the angel right-handed fires a curve, but he missed with it outside, ball two. And Lefty Phillips is now going to activate his bullpen, it would appear. Eddie Fisher is up and throwing in the California pen. And the 2-0 to Hendricks. Ground ball foul outside of first. Two balls and a strike. Well, Allen, who relieved starter Jim Maloney in the first inning, gave up two base hits in the third inning, a double by Powell and a single by Frank, and that got the Orioles their run. And that's been it until Frank opened with his second hit here on the bottom of the sixth, and an out later, Brooks followed with a single, and Frank just charged into third base and beat the throw from Alex Johnson. Two balls, one strike to Elrod Hendricks, the set by Allen the pitch. Fly ball, well hit, it'll get Frank in, chasing him now, the center fielder, Repo, he's getting to it. There's the catch. Here comes Frank. Brooks started for second and decided against it. And the Orioles now have a two to nothing lead. And the importance of the Robinson dash, Frank's dash from first to third, just sticks out all over the ballpark right now. On that sacrifice fly off the bat of Elrod Hendricks, the Orioles now take a two to nothing lead. For the rod, that'll be his fourth run batted in. Now, young Jerry Devannon. In this doubleheader tonight, excluding pitchers, manager Earl Weaver has managed to use everybody on the roster with the exception of Kurt Moulton and Clay Dalrymple. And we're not finished. Here is Jerry Devannon, the pitch. Swing and a miss with a good curveball from Allen. Strike one. The Birds, two runs and five hits. The Angels, no runs on three. Brooks at first base, two down. The Bannon reached on the error charge to O'Brien, the shortstop in the second, and then struck out. And here's the ball. One ball, one strike. The one one to Jerry DeBannon. Allen throws. He's blowing outside again. Two and one now. Eddie Fisher is warming in the California bullpen. Good-looking young Lloyd Allen, ready to go, and here is his 2-1 to Devannon. He's blown outside again, so the count rides now at three balls, one strike. Oakland here tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. Again, Saturday night at 7, and the great big one Sunday afternoon. Come on, weatherman, do your bit. The 3-1 pitch to Devannon. All ready to go. Allen delivers. He blow with the ball four. So Allen issues a walk with two outs. That sends Brooks down to second base, two down, and the batter will be pitcher Pat Dobson, and the fans in the ballpark got to give this fellow a pretty good hand as he starts up, but hold on a minute. Here comes Lefty Phillips out of the California Angel bullpen, and it could be that young Lloyd Allen could be tiring just a little bit. Allen has appeared in nine ball games and pitched a total of 12 innings. And he is now working in his sixth inning tonight. And Phillips is having a consultation with Johnny Stevenson. 
Both Andy Alomar are also in there, and Lefty uh, has decided that he'll go right along with two out, runners at first and second, and allow uh, Allen to face his uh, counterpart, Pat Dunn. Well, the Dauber was called upon to sacrifice in the second inning. He did so perfectly. Two out, nobody on in the fourth. Swing away, bounce to the second base from Alomar. Here's the announcement on Pat Dobson. Two down, but two on. The pitch to Dobson. Swing and a foul ball behind the plate. Strike one. One strike pitch to the Oriole hurlers. Allen delivers. Curving line drive. Base hit to center field. Here comes Brooks around third. Repose throw. On the way. Brooks is over standing up. Pitcher Pat Dobson. In his all of his starts uh, this year. His teammates have found it kind of difficult to get him any runs. In his two defeats uh, in one game, uh, they didn't get any runs at all. The other one, they could only get one run off Lovich. And here is Dobson with his third hit as an Oriole, driving in the Orioles' third run as Brooks Robinson scores. On the third base, Jerry Devannon. And on the throw to the plate, Dobson takes second base. And Lefty Phillips is on his way, and we will now have a pitching change. Bill? Well, with Fisher coming on, and this will be, of course, his second relief appearance in the doubleheader. He worked an inning in the first game. Lloyd Allen, who picked up for Jim Maloney in the first inning, gives up a total of five base hits. Had quite a few strikeouts in relief, six of them, including Blair and Boo Powell, back-to-back last inning. Strikes out six. He walks two. One of them missed inning to Vannon before Dobson's RBI base hit to center. And he has also given up uh, three runs. Allen leaves with the responsibility additionally of Devannon at third and Dobson at second base. Eddie Fisher comes on for his 12th relief appearance of the year. He's won four, he's lost one. And Fisher's earned run average among the very best in the majors, a little bit less than two runs a ball game. Fisher will come on with runners at second and third, and he will pitch to Mark Palanzi. While Fisher is warming, a reminder that uh, on Sunday afternoon, that box and reserve seats for that bat day attraction against the Oakland A's, box and reserve seats, of course, are still very plentiful. At noontime on Sunday, there will be an additional 17,000 general admission and 2,000 bleacher seats to go on sale here at the ballpark. That's at noontime on Sunday. That same day, all of you youngsters who are 14 and under, accompanied by a paying adult, will receive free of charge a Little League approved baseball bat, compliments of the Orioles. Uh, incidentally, speaking of the youngsters, an additional reminder about the very special clinic sponsored by the June, by the Oriole Advocates here on uh, Saturday morning at 11 o'clock. All youngsters are welcome. You do not have to be a member of the Junior Orioles. Uh, the youngsters, however, must be adequately chaperoned by adults. Prizes will be given. There will also be a question and answer session included in the 90-minute program on Saturday morning. To secure admission to the clinic and to the ballpark, you are advised to enter the stadium through gate W6. The Orioles who will take part in the 11 o'clock clinic on Saturday are Merv Rettmund, Don Buford, L. Ron Hendricks, Mark Belanger, and tonight's Orioles starting pitcher, Pat Dobson. They will all serve as instructors at the clinic Saturday at 11 in the morning. Well, Bill, as uh, manager Phillips makes the pitching change, bringing Eddie Fisher into the ball game, he also brings in a new catcher, Jerry Moses. Moses will now catch and will bat seven. Devan and the runner at, at third base. Dobson, the runner at second base. There are two outs. The Orioles three to nothing over the Angels, and here is Mark Belanger. The knuckleballer throws high and inside. Ball one to Mark. Eddie Fisher 
four and one on the year. Angel bullpen crew show a record of seven wins and two defeats. Pitch. High inside, ball two to mark. Here's Fisher's 2 nothing pitch to Belander. He got the knuckler in this time, 2-1. and one. Mark looking all the way. Dobson at second, DeBannon at third, two down. Two runs in here in the bottom of the sixth, and the Orioles now lead 3-0. Won the first game 3-1. The 2-1 pitch to Belanger. Inside and low, ball three. Three and one to Mark. On deck hitter, Paul Blair. Three one to Belanger swinging a line drive left field. Here's Alex Johnson coming up on the ball, and then it suddenly failed. He had to reach over his head to make the grab, and that'll be the final out. But at the end of six innings, the score is now Baltimore three and California nothing. Well, the game in the Twin Cities between Minnesota and the Yankees is now in the bottom of the second inning, and the Yankees still leading two to nothing. They got the two runs for Salomaya in the top of the first inning. In the National League at Montreal, they're playing the seventh inning. Houston leads the Expos 5-2 with Larry Durker against Steve Renko. Cardinals and Phillies and Philadelphia rained out, as were the Cubs and Mets this afternoon at New York. Okay, Chuck. Well, we start the seventh inning, and Davey Johnson has gone in to play second base now for the Orioles. And here is the southpaw swinging Jim Spencer. Dobson's first one is low inside in the ball. One ball, no strikes to Spence. He is 0 for 2 against the Dobber. Strike called as the fastball nailed the outside corner of the letter. Out on the Oriole bullpen, Dick Hall and Jim Harden are beginning to throw. A ball and a strike to the Angel first baseman, Spencer. Down comes the 1-1 offering. The curve is cut on and hit foul off the end of the bat. Right behind the plate, a ball and two strikes. Dobson with eight strikeouts. That's his personal high this year and also the high for any of the Oriole pitchers. One and two, the count to Spencer. Dobson ready to go. Here's the rocking motion in the pitch. Curving, ground ball hit toward first baseman Powell. He makes the one-handed pickup, goes for the bag. That takes care of Spencer. He's gone on the unassisted put out by Powell at first. Now the batter will be Alex Johnson, and Johnson tonight against Dobson is 0 for 2, and in the Orioles series is 0 for 11, and the truth of the matter is, has hit in nothing but tough luck. Alex has hit some torrid shots around this ballpark, but so far they've been hit right at somebody. The pitch to Johnson is low and outside. Ball one. Dobson with a one nothing to Alex Johnson. Looping foul out of play on the first base side. One ball, one strike. A ball and a strike to Alex Johnson. Dobson throws, curbing, strike is called. One ball and two strikes. Give you an idea of the strength and Oriole pitching in this California series. In 24 innings now, the Angels have amassed a total of two runs. One ball, two strikes. One out and nobody on. The are ready again. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. He struck out Alex Johnson. Nine strikeouts for Dobson. Steve. Weather might be a little on the chilly side, but Mr. Dobson is red hot. <laughs> Bill leans over and says, and when you're hot, you're hot. And when you're not, you're not. <laughs> that's quite a record, but uh, that's been having quite a play in our town anyway. Two out and uh, nobody on. Now Tony Canigliaro. 0 for 2 against the Dobbers. Strike call. Quick breaking pitch outside corner of the letter. 
Migliano was fouled to the catcher and looked at a third strike. The one strike pitch. Dobson deals again. Third, swing and a miss. Two strikes to Canigliaro. I'll tell you, Mr. Dobson, as Bill pointed out earlier. The game continues at the beginning of side four after a short delay. Dobbers change up the palm ball. He's given Canigliaro a couple of those. The count now two balls and two strikes. Two out and nobody on. And Dobson's ready. Fly ball, well hit, deep in the right field corner. Fading toward the foul pole, it is going to be a foul ball. Hit well by the right-hand swinging Canigliaro, right down the line, and slicing and saving, and finally it dropped off in foul ground. So Canigliaro's back of the dish with a count, two balls and two strikes. You missed it earlier, the Orioles with McNally defeated the Angels with Messersmith, 3-1 to one in the first game tonight. Two and two. The count for the waiting Tony Canigliaro. Says in the back of his jersey, Tony C. The pitch. Curved him outside and a ball. Now you can hear the reaction of some of the umpires in the seat. They thought that was a pretty good pitch. Hendricks apparently thought so, too. He's uh, turned around to say a word to Honestick now. Not, uh, you know, doesn't seem to be a very hot sort of a debate. Just uh, an exchange of opinions, I guess. Dobson 3-2 to Canigliaro. High pop-up, middle of the infield. Johnson and Belanger are converging. Johnson's calling for it. Near the bag at second, almost standing on the bag. Johnson made the catch, and that's it for the Angels in their half of the seventh inning. At the end of six and a half, Baltimore 3, California nothing. Just a quick reminder, because we've had some inquiries into the Oriole office about the Saturday night game against uh, the Oakland A's. A reminder that the Saturday game will start at 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock on Saturday against Oakland. And the weekend series tomorrow night at 8, Mike Cuellar against Jim Hunter. In the 7 o'clock Saturday game, Jim Palmer against Chuck Dobson. The back day ball game Sunday, Grant Jackson against seven game winner, Vita Blue. Here is Paul Blair. He'll be followed by Boog Powell and then Frank Robinson as the Orioles face Eddie Fisher in the bottom of the seventh inning with a 3 to nothing lead. Fisher's pitch is a strike call to, blow, to Paul Blair. Fisher a knuckleballer, but not quite like a Hoyt Wilhelm, who for the most part will just give you nothing but knuckleballs. Eddie will deliver, swing, and a miss at another knuckler, and the count now two strikes to Paul Blair. Fisher will uh, throw the breaking pitch in the fastball. Now his two-strike offering to Paul Blair. Fly ball, well hit, alley right center. Repose going hard to the glove side, still moving. Repose is there and makes the running grab to retire Paul Blair. One gone in the bottom of the seventh, and here now Boog Powell. A single, a double, and then the last time on against Lloyd Allen, he struck out. He now faces Eddie Fisher. first offering to Boog. It's low inside, ball one. Veteran umpire Jim Honacek on balls and strikes tonight. Ably supported by a newcomer, Larry McCoy at first base, Jim Oldham at second base, Marty Springstead at third. Fine quartet, the pitch outside to the Booger. 2-0. and oh. In the on-deck circle is Frank Robinson with a, just a fine night. He's two for two. Knocked in the Oriole first run, scored the second. Ball inside and high to Boog, and the count now is three balls and no strikes. And Boog seems to be a little annoyed, uh, having a little problem with his right knee. Backs out, flexing it every now and then. It may have occurred when Powell raced into a double in the third inning and went in with a slide at second base. He might have just jammed it a little bit. Three balls, no strikes to Boog. Fisher is ready. Here's his pitch. Strike inside corner, right at the letters. No knuckleball this time. The 3-1 offering coming to Powell. Ground ball, first base wave, backing at Spencer. He's got it. Throwing to the pitcher, covering it first, and Powell has been retired, and Boog limping just a little bit. Two down here in this uh, 
Bottom of the seventh, and Frank Robinson comes in. Frank walked in the first, single to knock in Powell with the first run of the ball game in the third inning. And then he singled to open the sixth inning, and with an out later, when Brooks Robinson singled, a ground single in the hole to left field, Frank went from first to third and beat the hurried throw from Alex Johnson. Then he was able to score on the sacrifice fly off the bat of Elrod Hendricks. Pitch, swing and a foul ball right at the plate. Strike one to Frank. Jerry Moses is doing the catching. He's been here since uh, the sixth inning. When Fisher came into the ball game. Moses came in with him. Yankees three, Minnesota one at the end of three. Out in Bloomington, Minnesota tonight for one strike pitch to Frank. Low ball one, one and one. Houston the five and Montreal one. Montreal batting in the bottom of the seventh inning. One one to Frank Robinson. Swing and a foul right on through to the bat boy, Jay Mazzone, who knocked it down. A ball and two strikes. Fisher, with his back turned to the plate, is working over a new baseball. And the one-two pitch to Frank. Check swing, ground ball hit right back to the mound. Fisher is there to make the pick up and throw the first in time to get Frank for the final out. Three up, three down at the end of seven. Baltimore three, California nothing. The top of the eighth inning coming up, but before we go to the eighth, let's pause for station identification. This is the Baltimore. All right, I'll be Here is Roger Repo to start the Angels in their half of the eighth inning against the uh, Oriole right-hander Pat Dobson. Working on a three-hitter and shutting the Angels out through the first seven innings is Dobson. All ready to go. The first offering to Repo, he squared off as if he had an idea of a bunt, and the Dobson pitch came down high and outside. Uh-oh, I see it's beginning to sprinkle a little bit. None of one of those showers is drifting in over the ballpark. And the one nothing to the waiting repos. Swing and a foul tip off the chest protection with a plate on fire. How to check. One ball, one strike. Repos singled in the second inning and struck out in the fifth inning. And it's beginning to rain here in Memorial Stadium in Baltimore as we go to the eighth inning. And the one one to Roger Repos. Dobson uh, rocks and throws. Swing and a pop foul behind the plate. Maybe out of play. Hendricks back to give it a look, and it's going to be on the screen and out of reach. A ball and two strikes to Repo. Well, it's been that kind of a night. The weatherman told us that the shower should clear up uh, sometime this evening. Well, uh, they stopped in time to get the double header in, but now as we get in the late innings of the uh, second game, it's beginning to rain once more. One ball, two strikes. To repo. Dobson's pitch, curve, strike. Three is called. No comment from repo. Ten strikeouts now for Pat Dobson. And the Dauber now has retired 10 in a row. Make it 8 in a row, excuse me. One out, nobody on, and here is McMullen. Ball outside. McMullen fly to center and single to right. Strike is called, one and one. Through the batting order now, here's the only fellow that Dodson has not struck out. McMullen. The 1-1 pitch. Curve. Fly ball. Well hit. Deep left field. It's going to go. A McMullen home run. And a 3-1 ball game as Dodson loses his shutout. On the home run bat of Ken McMullen. It's his third home run of the year. And now a 3-1 ball game. For 
Dodson. That'll be the third home run pitch he has thrown this year. Now in his sixth starting assignment. Jerry Moses now uh, stands in against uh, Dobson. He went 0 for 3 in the first game tonight. Strike is called as Dobson laid the fastball over the outer corner right around the letters. And the one strike pitch. Swing and a foul ball in the dirt behind the plate. Two strikes to Jerry Moses. A little stirring of activity in the Oriole bullpen, and uh, Billy Wynn is throwing out there, and a left-hander has just joined him in the California pen. Two strikes, the count to Moses. Pitch, curve, outside. One ball, two strikes. Pete Rickard is up and throwing in the Oriole bullpen, and Eddie Watt is uh, there with him. One ball, two strikes, the count to the batter, Moses. One out and a run in. Three to one, Baltimore. Just inside with this one. Two balls and two strikes. Dave LaRoche. LaRoche is the left-hander in the California pen. And the 2-2 pitch to Jerry Moses. Swing and a ground ball off the first base side. Boog Powell is there. The throw to the pitcher covering is in time. And Moses has been retired. First baseman to the pitcher covering. And the batter now headed for the dish is Sid O'Brien. Struck out, grounded to short. It's a very light miss uh, dropping here at the stadium. Ball is outside of the right-handed batsman. And Dobson ready with a one nothing pitch to O'Brien. Strike call. He pinpointed the outer portion that time, up around the letters to O'Brien. One ball, one strike. Time call. Uh, the Dauber wants another baseball. LaRoche, the left-hander. Billy Wynn, the right-hander. In the Angel bullpen. And Eddie Watt and Pete Rickard in the Oriole bullpen. Now the one one pitch. Foul ball right up the screen. One and two. Two down, but a run in. And the count of the ball and two strikes to Sid O'Brien. As Dobson steps and throws, he's just off the corner. Outside, two and two. To the Angel shortstop, Sid O'Brien, playing for the injured Jim Fergosi. He has a very tender, very sore foot. Started the first game, but had to take himself out. The 2-2 pitch to O'Brien. Curve, swing and a foul right behind the plate. Two balls, two strikes to O'Brien. Two down on the top of the eighth inning. Dobson ready. And the pitch again. Ground ball right by Dobson. It's going to go right on through in the center field for a base hit. O'Brien bangs one just off the right shoulder of Dobson on through the center field. And for the first time tonight, the Angels have more than a hit an inning. And uh, on the way to the plate now is Tony Gonzalez. And he's appeared, I think, one time as a pinch hitter in this series. Tuesday night, Gonzalez came on in the seventh inning as a pinch hitter and struck out. Gonzalez for Eddie Fisher. Two away. And Gonzalez in 14 ball games has been to the plate 17 times, hitting a 294. Two doubles and six runs batted in. Left handed swinger to the right hand offerings of Pat Dodson. Powell is not holding uh, with the runner at first base, Sid O'Brien. He's uh, a couple of steps behind the bag. We're waiting for Gonzalez to get settled at the plate. He's having a little trouble digging in. He looks a little bit like Oliva right now, the way he's digging with that foot. 
fine veteran hitter is uh, Gonzalez. Dobson's pitch to Gonzalez, swinging a ground ball, a high hopper over the mound, charging Belanger. He tried to make the ha- pick up on the half hop, couldn't get it. It rolls by him out into shallow center field, and on with a well, a Baltimore chop, a scratch hit is Gonzalez. This took a short hop out in front of the plate, and then a towering hop like a pop up, way back over the pitcher's head, and playing back at a normal shortstop depth. Belanger charged across, put the glove hand down, running full tilt. Tried to play the ball on the half off, and he did not come up with it. It uh, rolled through into shallow center for a scratch single. So the um, Angels have uh, picked on Dobson for three bases here in this uh, top of the eighth inning. Still two out, and Sandy Alomar is at the plate. Look to the third strike, bounce to the mound, fly to center field. A left-handed swinger to the right-hand offerings of Dobson. The pitch, ground ball right back to the dobber. He's got it belt high. The throw to first for the final out of the inning, and that's it. The Angels get a run and three hits and lead two. The end of seven and a half, Baltimore three, California one. Well, a Colorado left-hander, Dave LaRoche, six-foot-two-inch, 185-pounder. Dave LaRoche becomes the Angels' fourth pitcher in this second game. Maloney did not get by the first inning. Then uh, Lloyd Allen pitched the next five. Eddie Fisher won a perfect inning and one-third, faced four men, and retired four. And now uh, Dave LaRoche to pitch the bottom of the eighth inning. This marks uh, LaRoche's tenth relief appearance. He has six ten innings without giving up an earned run. He does have credit for a win without a defeat. LaRoche in the bottom of the eighth inning will work against Rettman, Brooks Robinson, and Elrod Hendricks. Well, here is Merv Rettman against the southpaw Dave LaRoche. Dave, uh, or Merv rather tonight, has uh, gone to the plate three times without a base now. LaRoche's first offering to Rettman is uh, too low, ball one. Uh, whatever that was, with a little bit of a sprinkle, uh, apparently has disappeared. It's 1-0 to count to Rettman. LaRoche uh, swings to the windup and down comes the 1-0. Check swing pop up, third base side. McMullen is coming in and the third baseman makes the grab to retire Rettman. Merv tried to stop the swing, couldn't get the bat out of the wing and popped it to the third baseman. One gone and now Brooks Robinson. He walked. Good play by Spencer retired him in the third inning and then Brooks uh, banged a big hit, base hit in the sixth inning. And the Orioles went on to a two-run, three-hit six. McMullen's home run has brought the Angels a bit closer. It's three to one. Here's the pitch to Brooks. Fouled away to the upper deck. Strike one. And the one-strike pitch. High and inside. A ball and a strike to Brooks. Two is again outside to Brooks. Two balls and a strike. LaRoche is 2 1 to Brooks. Foul ball out of play behind the plate. Two and two. Two-two pitch to Brooks. Foul ball right up the screen out of play. (laughs) And Brooks is two for two in the foul ball department. Both of those he's hit on the screen have stayed there. They have not rolled off. And the California left-hander delivers once more. He is inside and high to fill the count of three and two. Now the payoff, 3-2 pitch on the way to Brooks Robinson. LaRoche delivers, swinging a looping pop-up outside of first base, giving Chase Spencer, still moving. He makes a fine running over-the-shoulder catch to retire Brooks Robinson. 
A nifty defensive play from the Angel first baseman Spencer. Two away on the batter now will be Elrod Hendricks. He has fanned, fouled to the catcher, and knocked in a run on a sacrifice fly. We now get left-handed swinging to the left-handed pitching of LaRoche. Behind uh, Hendricks, Dave Johnson's out there in the on-deck circle. The rod settles in, and here comes the left-hander's first pitch. Beautiful curveball. Strike is called. And the one-strike pitch to Hendricks. Strike two called outside corner at the knees. It's a fastball from Dave. Hendricks back to talk a little bit to Hanachik. Apparently not very serious. He went right back into the box again. 0-2, the count to the rod. LaRoche fires. High. One ball and two strikes. This but the second doubleheader of the year for the Orioles. The other one was against the Tigers, and they split that one. Now the 1-2 to Hendricks. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. But three up and three down. At the end of eight, the score. Baltimore three, California one. Well, let's give you a complete rundown now on both the American and National League school boards before we go to the top of the ninth inning. In the American League at Minnesota, the Yankees three, the Twins one. Twins batting bottom of the fifth inning, Stottlemyre against Hall. This afternoon, the Red Sox beat the White Sox 10-1, to Peters beat Johnson. National League, Cubs and Mets rained out this afternoon, as were the Cards and Phillies tonight. Eighth inning at Montreal, Houston leads the Expos 5-2. to Cincinnati at Los Angeles will start in about, oh, 40 minutes. Bill, uh, here is Dobson's pitch to Jim Spencer starting the top of the ninth inning. Wide of the plate and a ball one. He's got a tough trio here in the ninth in Spencer, Johnson, and Canigliaro. And the one nothing to Spencer. Swing and a fly ball. Center field way. Uh, off in the alley in right center. Setting up under it is Paul Blair. Waiting, waiting. Blair's got it. One away in the ninth. And now Alex Johnson. He is... Grounded a short, fine running catch by Paul Blair. Took an extra base hit away from him in the fourth inning. Seventh inning, Dobson struck him out. Dobson has fanned 10 tonight. First pitch to Johnson. Low and outside, ball one. Pop foul out of play behind the plate. A ball and a strike to Alex. And a great nickname, this fella, Alex the Axe. And he is tough with that bat. One ball, one strike. Dobson rocks and throws. Foul ball up the screen. One and two. And the one-two pitch to Alex Johnson. Dobson about ready to go. And the right-hander brings the arm down. His curve is high, and the count now is 2-2 two and two to Alex Johnson. Two-two to Johnson. Curve, ground ball hit toward Belange of the shortstop. He's got throw on to Powell at first. Two down in the ninth inning. And Dobson uh, one out away from his second uh, win of the year. Orioles and out away from their fourth straight victory and their fourth straight complete game. Here is Canigliaro, foul to the catcher, looked at the third strike and popped to the second baseman. The pitch to Tony C. He bunts third base side. Brooks Robinson charging is going to let it roll, 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 and it's going to hang fair right down to the bag. So a bunt single by Canigliaro. Two outs. Canigliaro bunts his way aboard. And that, of course, will bring the tying run to the plate in the person of Roger Repos, big, strong, left-handed swinger, with power. He's got one home run this year as Repos, and eight runs batted in. He got four of those runs batted in with one swing of the bat, the grand slam against Dick Hall and the O's in Anaheim. 
Mariners were out there. Two out. Canigliaro at first, and Powell is back way off the bag. Repo stands in, and we're ready to go. The pitch. High on the ball. Canigliaro, uh taking his lead at first base, and nobody paying a whole lot of attention to him. Two outs. And uh, the one nothing pitch coming to repose. Dobson delivers. Got the breaking pitch in, and the strike is called. One and one. One ball, one strike. Repose uh, takes a little bit of a stroll between each and every pitch. Now he's back in and ready to go. Dobson's 1-1 pitch to Repo. Swing a line drive base hit into right field. Frank Robinson on to field the ball. Down to second holding there is Canigliaro. And uh, with two down now, the Angels come battling back. And here's the man with a home run bat, Ken McMullen. McMullen hit his third home run into the seats in left field to account for the only Angel run of the game thus far. Dobson got the first two in the inning. Spencer on a fly to center. Johnson on a ground ball to short. Then Canigliaro bunted his way on. Repos is singled. And now here is Ken McMullen. Dobson's pitch to McMullen. Ground ball right back through the middle into center field. Charging the ball to Slayer. Down to third base comes Canigliaro. And they hold him right there. So three straight California base hits. And out of the dugout comes Bamberger. On his way to the mound. The bases are loaded. And the due batter is Jerry Moses. Holding at third, Canigliaro. At second base, Repos. At first base, Ken McMullen. And Bamberger is on his way to talk to Pat Dobson. Moses, in his only trip to the plate against Dobson, in the eighth inning, was retired on a ground ball to Boo Powell for the pitcher covering. Well, Bamberger didn't take very long. He went out and said a few words, and now is on his way to the dugout. Bases are loaded. Two down, and Moses is at the plate. Time call requested by Moses. He backs out. Here is Johnson to the move, and his first pitch to Moses. Outside for a ball. Well, nothing has come easy for Dobson since he donned the uniform of the Orioles. And here he is in a very sticky situation. Two out on the top of the ninth. Three to one lead. And it's one nothing to Moses. Swing and a miss. One ball and one strike to Jerry. Dobson ready to go once more. Here's the one one to Moses. Five ball hit toward the alley right center field. Frank Robinson and Blair are converging. It'll be Frank Robinson under. He's got, and the ball game is over. That's it. The Orioles win it by a score of three to one. And Bill will be back with a recap for you right after this message. The copyrighted broadcast featured in this tape is presented by authority of Major League Baseball properties on behalf of the Major League Baseball clubs and the Office of the Commissioner of Baseball. That may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without express written consent. All won four in a row, and in winning four in a row, they've also gained four complete games from their four starters, namely Mike Cuellar in the getaway win Sunday at Kansas City, then Jim Palmer's route killing win to start this series Tuesday night against the Angels, McNally's opening game win tonight against the Angels as they prevailed by a score of three to one, and then Pat Dobson prevailed as uh, he helped the Orioles win the second game by a score of 3-1. to one. Now, before we give you some final words and also the recap and line fiddles on tonight's game, reminder that we'll be back with a final word after this message. Here are the totals now on the nightcap Oriole win behind Pat Dobson. They gain three runs, six hits, no errors, and they leave seven. The Angels in losing a run, nine hits, an error, and they leave six. And Pat Dobson in going the route also strikes out 10 Angels. Dobson, two wins, two defeats. Lloyd Allen is the Angel reliever. His record, two wins and one defeat.